Welcome back. Second half about to get underway in the Estonian capital, Tallinn, the Lillekula Stadium here in Group A of the European Under-19 Championship. He's been on target. Bruma, wide player for Portugal, scoring a goal to equalise moments after Jose Rodriguez had given Spain the lead this evening. Jose scored again. But then so did Portugal through Andre Gomez there. And it was a terrific first 45 minutes. I, for one, Gary O'Reilly alongside me, can't remember a more quality in a match at this uh, age level. No, the few and far between games of this calibre anyway. But at this age level, it's, uh, it's phenomenal to see the sort of football that they're producing. Oh, the one-touch passing and... Recovered possession, intelligent possession. We're well used to seeing from the other Spain side, certainly the senior Spanish side, but Portugal as well with their sharp passing and working the triangles have been an absolute delight to. I wonder if it's fair to expect Grimaldo to uh, remain in his own half. For this 45 minutes, what do you think? Probably not. No. Yes, the game's all the better for it. Why change your natural instincts? And here they come again. Right, in the opening moments, it's a ball over the top for Delofu. The fullback makes a good challenge. Cancelo. But it's given straight back to Campania. And Niguez. to Ramayo, the substitute who came on when Manquillo was injured in the first half. Of course, 2-2, not enough in terms of securing a spot in the semi-finals for either of these two. If it stays like this, it's all square at the end. And they'll have to do something in their final matches. The Portuguese play Greece. Spain play Estonia on Monday. Everyone's being given a touch here, including Ramayo. Campania. That was Torres. Oh, flick round the corner there from Torres, and off he goes. Actually, pretty frightening. Here's Delofu, tricking and turning, and then going back to beat the same player again. Because yeah, once is never enough. Delofu still going, he wants to beat the other player, he's already beaten again! It's into the middle for a hat-trick for Jose Rodriguez. Extraordinary! Can you get more than just an assist if you're Delofu? Seriously, because this, this is a goal and a half. <laughs> He's beat the same player four times, they come back, it's just, it's ridiculous, it's a beautiful ball, it opens up the Portuguese defence, shows it, drags it back, has another go, says, look, I've done it once, now again, I'm coming back for you, see the ball, no, nah, no you don't, yes you do, and then whip. Look, everyone else has stood still, the two central defenders are transfixed by Dulafo's skill, because they're not sure what's going to happen, look, he's... And then everyone on but Jesse goes, yeah, you know what, I know what to do here, I'll have this. Pop. Great anticipation from the striker. Oh, but striker. what set at play, and I can uh, confirm spontaneous applause in the commentary box oh, when man. Jose Rodriguez rolled that in. Absolutely. You know what, wherever it is, if it's talent like that, you have to get up and applaud it. Right at the start of the second half. Edgar Borges, the Portuguese coach, would have told his players that they did a terrific job and were more than a match for their opponents in the first half, but such good work undone. And did they actually have a kick? Did they have a move before Jose Rodriguez finished that off? I'm not entirely sure they did. <sighs> it was possession from the word go again, wasn't it, at yeah. the start of the second half? And that's what happens when you get a player like Delafoe with possession in the box. You can't be rash with your challenges, you can't, you've got to sit, you try and contain. And when he's got touch like that, it's just destructive. 
Bruma. Oh, what a Portugal guy, eh, Andy? Because they've come back twice in this game so far. And quickly, after conceding both times. That's João Mario. Change of pace, but too much pace. Oh, there he goes again, De Lofut. Just frightening. <laughs> Yellow card there for Bettinho. Frustration overcoming the sporting striker. Just has a nibble, can't resist it, can he? A little tug on the shirt, and uh, Niguez is trying to get past him. They've got such great self belief and confidence in their abilities. Might have to go and have a word with the graphics guy again. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned that at the start. We were prepared to put up with it, but he's trying our patience, bless him. For Vizela, man. Agostinho Sa. And then returned by Esgayo to Agostinho Sa. Two blue shirts around him. Where's the support? Expect Danny Martins running up behind him. Not there, though. Here's Bruma. There is Danny Martins. Sinti Agostinho Sa. Trying to do too much. Suso. Oh. Just the quality of the passing from a, a seemingly difficult position. They just keep so composed. There's none of this mm. lumping it forward. Always into feet, isn't it? Yeah, because people are showing up. You know, if all of a sudden you're on the ball and you get your head up and you see numbers disappearing into the sunset, it's quite difficult to feel confident about your pass. When you're playing in the Spain team and even in this Portugal team, you're looking at it, seeing faces, and you're not just seeing one, you're seeing twos and threes. Tiago Ilori. That'll be a free kick. Yeah. Slightly clumsy from Campania, the skipper. Can't complain too much about that, can he? Look. He knows he steps right across him. It's a good change of direction from Cancelo. Dangerous position. They've overloaded the far post area, haven't they, Portugal? And right now, Spain are zonal marking and not dealing with the players on the far post. Broom is in there. Thiago Ferreira's come forward. Looks like Thiago Iluri setting himself for a run as well. Martins, the left footer, standing over it. It is Martins who sends it in. In the circumstances, that goes down as a, a squandered opportunity. play out from the back no matter what shall we <laughs> yeah it almost got them into trouble there but gritty when they need to be balls pushed into the and well, he's claiming a pass foul. back aren't they from Thiago Ilori no I'm lucky I think the here because he's got the pace he knocks it and cuts across the defender but the defenders not having it so he strong arms him and uh, Ilori just stops him, gets away with it. Yeah, but a real let-off. And you wonder, if they go two goals clear, how Portugal will be able to respond. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Jose Rodriguez. João Mario tracking him. Uh, well played, Cancelo. It's coolly done. Andre Gomez. Yeah. 
Campagna. Never rushed into anything. Never seems to be anyway. Grimaldo will give it back to his goalkeeper. And look how high Portugal have pushed up. That means they're stretched now. <laughs> Gives room for that man, Grimaldo. Now they tried to switch it. Oh, just loose touch that time from Delofu. Bruma, Agostinho Sar. The De Lufu is, uh, is parked up on this right-hand side for a little while. It'll be interesting to see how he goes on his natural side. There goes his guy out. Cutting in field, this guy out still going, just about keeping his balance. Andre Gomez. Ooh, wow. Just the merest hint of hesitancy, stumped away by Romeo. This is closer we've come to panic in this game. Someone just hoofed it. That's Martins. Lager. You just said that. Closest we've come to panic. We're nearly at the hour mark. Yeah. And these are 17, 18 year olds. Absolutely. Future's bright. It's good. <laughs> if you're Spanish or Portuguese. Ah, oh, you know, if you're a football fan, just watching these guys play is, is just a joy. You say Rodriguez, hat trick scorer. Alvaro Morata did much the same in last year's edition as Spain beat Serbia by four goals to nil. Ended up demolishing the Republic of Ireland 5 0 in the semi final last year. And then the Czech Republic took them pretty much the distance before the Spanish emerged 3-2 after extra time in the final they scored a goal in the 115th minute in Romania last year Alcacer the scorer that day he's on the bench the Valencia striker this evening Ricardo Esgallo Jao Cancelo, there goes this guy, oh, the pass is a little too heavy, and Ozeda is able to clear. Just trying to eke their way back into it, Portugal, aren't they? Just a little bit overcooked there from Cancelo. But Ozeda sees the danger, deals with it. Here's Bruma. Martins, it's a high hanging cross, watched all the way and claimed by Ariza Bayaga. Probably really going to be a trouble for the goalkeeper. A lot of height on it, doesn't really favour the forward. Good spell for Portugal, this. Is Bruma, uh, ran away from it. Portugal, who didn't qualify for the 2011 edition of this competition and back at the finals after a two-year absence actually won the European title when it was an under 18 competition back in 1999 the last of three victories but none since it went to under 19 in 2002 These two met two years ago at under-17 level. One or two survivors on both sides. Spain won that match by two goals to nil. Delofu, a scorer that night. And there he goes, giving chase against João Cancelo. It's the Portuguese fullback who wins out. Luckily as well, because there's a certain push in the back there. Danny Martins. Bruma. Lovely close control. Taking on the fullback. Bruma's done well. He can't get any elevation on the cross. 
knew what he wanted, didn't he, Bruma? He knew what he was trying to tease that defender in so as he skipped round outside and backed his own pace. It's contributed to this Portuguese corner. And conceded by Johnny. Corner from Bruma into the mixer. Esgaio with a retrieval. And then Agostinho Sar. Danny Martins. Well, that's a useful looking cross. Oh, there were two of them forward, Bettinho and Thiago Ilori. And it's the latter who's able to try and salvage it. And they'll win the throw. Just couldn't get in the end of it, could he? Bettinho. Well, he would be able to on the end of this. Not required to. Because it's out for a corner. Cross sent in by Cancelo. And they've done it once already, Portugal. What have we got? Right into the mixer again. Well, that's a couple of times now. Is Arisa Bayaga is claimed unpressured. How's that for a strikeout to find the, the little... Fantastic, wasn't it? And then from a standing stop, tries the dribble and then drills in the cross. It's Campania, the skipper, who's made his way forward. Jose Rodriguez there. Campania tries the stepovers unsuccessfully. Shielded by Ilori. Suso still going. Has it opened up for him? Oh, he was reluctant to have the shot, and then he under-hit the path to Delofa. You know what, I'd back Suso to dribble it in the goal. <laughs> From about the 18-yard line, <laughs> I think he could. He's got that kind of skill, hasn't he? They all have. Well, him more than others, he's <laughs> close control. Yeah. Just hit the hour mark and taking a bit of a lull, just a natural lull, I think. Well, he's given his all, Delofu and Juanmi. So, it's one supremely experienced player at this level. Seems like something of an oxymoron to be calling a, an under-19 international experience. But, well, they've been playing international tournaments for the best part of three or four years now. And Juanmi is another uh, skipper in this squad. Was the uh, youngest ever player to feature in the Copa del Rey a couple of years ago for his club, Malaga. Involved at just 16. <laughs> Patege is just uh, resting his assets, he's just managing things, he's, he knows that he doesn't have to uh, stress Delefo too much, he's going to need them in other games. Interesting, he's kept his striker on, they say. Agostinho Sar. Not too many are out muscling him, the anchor man for Portugal. There we go, little triangles again. Sol Niguez. Johnny. Ozedi. Look at the cross in the pitch. Backwards, forwards, little triangles, pop it in, pop it out. Get across, move it, keep moving it. At the moment, Portugal are holding their shape well. It's the left back. Well forward again. Grimaldo. Corner is what? He's been quiet this half compared to the last half and getting forward, but I think that's important. Got the lead now, Spain. They need to make sure they don't do anything rash to throw it away again. You know, scoring three goals in a game is fantastic, but they've given the lead away twice. Corner is short. Finally, the cross comes in. It was Ozeidi well forward. And boot on it, though, from Thiago Ferreira. 
They fan out once again and find the room down the left with Grimaldo. That's an important challenge. João Mario digs out the pass to Andre Gomez. And then Bruma. Andre Gomez is Bruma. Jao Mario looks for the width. Cancelo providing it. Jao Cancelo, good run this into the Spanish box. Just enough on the foot in from Azadi. Tries to take on one man too many there, Cancelo. Here's Torres. Here's Johnny. Well, play on, says the referee. It looked like a rather forceful challenge from João Mario on Campania. Oh, what, Spain still have the ball. Phenomenal. Suso. Tries to clip it over the top. <laughs> he's has it, he's has his hat trick, but he he wants more. Does Jose Rodriguez? Oh yeah, he's a striker. Not for Tegi, maybe backs him to do so. <clears throat> Otherwise, since he may have gone the way of Delofu. Well, he swapped him out in games in the, against Greece, didn't he? Early on in the second half. It was Alcacer who came on in that opening match. And like for like. Player who shone in last year's finals. And maybe we'll see that change again before this evening is out. Romayo, the sub. And had to be helped out there by Johnny. Edgar Borges is making a change, and Bettinho has struggled to have any kind of impact on tonight's proceedings, and he will be replaced by Ivan Cavaliero, who made an appearance from the bench in the opening victory over Estonia. Get involved straight away. It's just squeeze loose for Niguez and then Campania. And he kept it going even though he was fouled by Cavaliero. That's the sub's first contribution, really. Yeah, it just brings him back for intent, doesn't he? Torres. <laughs> Campania. Agostinho Saar just snapping away at him. Campania. Suso. Torres. Two red shirts around him, on he goes though. Still going Oliver Torres. Danny Martins did enough. Out of play for a Portugal goal kick. Since winning the 2011 title, Spain won six of their seven matches both non-competitive and in qualifying for this tournament. The only one they didn't win was a two-all draw. Rimaldo still going, and the left-back running right at the heart of them again, and, well, just loses balance on the edge of the penalty area. Did he, or was he given a helping hand? 
Referee obviously uh, thinks he's quite he's lenient, to... actually, hasn't he, the ref? Yeah, one or two little things like that he's let go. Bruma. Step over after step over after step over, and then he can't find Gomez ahead of it. Here comes Jesse Rodriguez. Agostinho Saar tracking him. Tough one for Jesse there. He's up there on his own, trying to trying to create something, carve something out. Spain were given a bye into the elite qualifying round in May. They were spared the rigours of a preliminary qualifying group. They recorded three 2 1 victories against Armenia, Italy, and Belgium. Qualified for these finals with something to spare, pretty much like Portugal in the end of it, who, with 29 goals, scored eight more than any other team in qualifying for these finals. Some ridiculously big wins. 9-1 against the Pharaohs, 6-0 San Marino, 7-1 against Israel. João Cancelo is coming off the hard-working right-back. It's interesting because uh, De La Faux's gone off and that threat isn't there anymore, really, is it? Pedro Almeida comes up. His first taste of the action in these finals, Almeida. There he was. First touch into the other sub, Cavallero. Agostinho Saar. Martins. Bruma. Cavallero. Great balance with Cavallero there. Got the return pass too. Can they lift the ball into the Spanish penalty box? Yes, they can, but it didn't get beyond the first defender. Campania had placed himself there. And Jose Rodriguez, splendid first touch. It's into Juan Mi. Territory gained. Great little touch there from Chazé. Grimaldo, oh, lovely, lovely triangle again. Here's Grimaldo. It's on to Juanmi. The shot was blocked. Suso can't trick his way out of trouble there. Agostinho Sar up to Cavallero. He'd be able to hold it up, not quite. It's enough on the challenge from Sol Niguez to put him off. Inside the last 20 minutes, and although the second half hasn't quite lived up to the standard of the first, what could have? Very few things. <laughs> Very few. I think the coaches would be happy it hasn't gone that way. Chazé there, number 10 for Spain, has scored a hat-trick this evening at the Lilicula Stadium. Just wonder if he'll be given a breather. Final group match on Monday. Right in Spain take on Estonia. You'd fancy that maybe he'll play him out this whole game and then rest him for that one. And now Casera to come in. It's not secure quite yet though. Nor Spain's place in the last four. Over the top from João Mario. That's useful. Cavallero! Too near the goalkeeper. Another sign, another indication, though, that Portugal have what it takes to get in behind the Spanish. 
Good movement from Cavaliero. You watch this. First touch, second touch the strike, and he's trying to get it across the goalkeeper. Good football. Sting into action, don't they? Scored five goals for the under-19 team. She's a great return. Here's Bruma. That's well played. Andre Gomez will pull it across, and Bruma again. Blocked. Oh, look at the run of Jose Rodriguez. They've cut them open again. He's not going to get a fourth, is he? Oh, very casual. And you wonder at a more critical stage of the game whether he'd gone on and tried to make sure more than he actually did there. Look at this great run. And Ferreira again caught napping. Give credit to Ilori there because he pushes him wide. He just pushes him out and makes the angle difficult, keeps his head down. And then the goalkeeper Veloso is able to shut down that near post. Saves it with his foot in the end, Rafael Veloso. How quickly did they turn a defensive operation into an attacking one there? Here comes the corner. And Ferreira underneath it. The shot was miss hit somewhat by Johnny. Suso. Martins at him. Referee lets that one go. Bruma gives it away in turn to Oliver Torres. And then Ferreira beneath the cross. Finally, danger subsides for Portugal. Although, does it? Well, not as long as they keep running into trouble. Oliver Torres takes over and is then fouled by Portugal skipper João Mario. And it will be... A free kick. It's just relentless at times from Spain. It is. That one's a, just a cynical foul from the captain. And Andre Gomez there just running with the ball in midfield. No surprise he's going to get dispossessed. It's the whole idea about moving it as, as quickly and as, as possible. So, <laughs> that's a relief, as far as Portugal are concerned. An offside decision there. I think he's having a game with us now. <laughs> Thought you were going to go and have a word. He obviously didn't use the right ones. <laughs> well, there's always uh, the next match. Well, yes, we'll give him a, a pet talk before that. That was Andre Gomez. João Mario given away. Cardinal Sin against Spain. It's Juan Mee who's moved into that centre forward position when Jose drops elsewhere. And Juan Mee of Malaga is uh, well, the player in the Spanish squad who is nearest to matching and thus surpassing the uh, record. Goal-scoring mark at under-19 level for Spain, set by none other than Juan Mata of Chelsea, and a European champion. He scored 12 for them. And that's a fair challenge from Andre Gomez. I think he's not gone up with his elbows, he's gone up to head the ball. I agree. Just contact with the goalkeeper. Some referees will allow it, others don't. Yeah, there's nothing dangerous there, is there, in the leap? No. Well, last activity for Andre Gomez, because coming on here is uh, Jose Carvalho from Porto. Scored four goals for the under-19 side, contributed goals in qualifying. Dear Mark, is one to watch out for coming into this tournament. Jose. It's his first taste of it. I don't want to need to change his barber. Yes. Not the only one about whom you can say that, really, in uh, the world of modern football. No, I just sound old and grumpy. <laughs> we like it.
That's why you're on here. Is it? Yeah. yeah, substitutions coming pretty thick and fast now. And there will not be a fourth goal for Jose Rodriguez. Just the three, though, for him to content himself with today. He'll be replaced by Denis Suarez. Now then, he is desperately trying to make a name for himself at Man City. A year at Eastland Suarez after moving from his homeland where the uh, at Celta Vigo is his local club. Another off the production line. Something tells me he's not going to be a big bruising centre half. No, but if you think about David Silva, neither is he. Here he is, Suarez. Stopped by Cavaliero. Inside the last ten minutes in Tallinn. Spain are on their way through to the semi-finals and thus booking their place in the Under-20 World Cup next year. It's interesting we've seen the, the full team win Euro 2012 without a recognised central striker. And yet tonight we've seen the same style of football and a hat-trick from Yesse, an out-and-out -out striker. So it just shows you that there's, there's flexibility in their thinking, most certainly throughout their whole Spanish setup. Bruma. Pass was a little under hit. Well played though by Elori. Toze scrapping in to win it. And there he is again, the Portugal sub. João Mario takes over. He's just hurried into making that pass and therefore surrendering the possession. But it's back with Toze and fouled by Denis Suarez. Subs of each colour clashing. 3-2, there's always that little concern, isn't it? If you're Spain, that there's an equaliser pending. Yeah, Ariza Bayaga just arranging things ahead of him. This is some considerable distance out. Jose is there. On it. It's set up for a super sub. It's Toze on target, spilled by the goalkeeper. Oh, it should have been in for Thiago Ferreira, but he hit the rebound straight back at Ariza Bayaga. What a let off for Spain. Right place, right time, wrong man. That's a very lame follow up, isn't it? To follow it in and then just hit it straight back at the keeper. Almost defies belief. Here comes the corner, and here comes the header from Ilori. Way over. Yeah, Ilori gets a bit of cramp. Just, I think, had it fallen to maybe a Bruma or something like that. Finish would have been different. Not a natural finisher, is he? See, that ball moves all over the place. Something's not working as it should, I'm afraid. Problems with the feed coming in from Estonia. <laughs> Apologies for the momentary loss of pictures. They had to restore coverage from the Lilikula Stadium in Tallinn in Estonia as soon as we possibly can. Yeah. 
time ticking away here for the Portuguese. And continue this phenomenal run for Spain. They make constant reference to uh, the quality and the success of the senior side in just winning the European Championship. We saw in Poland and the Ukraine, but you can kind of uh, just transpose it really to the other age groups. So consistent are the results, so consistent is the success. That's Campania. And slotting it through for Suarez, who's eager to make a name for himself. That's away by Ferreira. As well as winning this championship last year, Spain were in the final the year before as well. Beaten by the hosts that year, France. They're looking for their third straight appearance in the final. Here's Thiago Ferreira. Bruma. Cavalero. Bruma wanted to get on the return ball and eventually did get there, got the better of Johnny and it's in by Cavalero. Too high for Thiago Ferreira. Back with Ilori. Tries to head it back into the danger area. Campania just drops it over the top. One me. Three red shirts around him. It's Juan Mi trying to do it all himself. He should have slipped it out to Suarez. A little bit greedy there, Juan Mi. Absolutely. Suarez in all sorts of room on the left. He thought he was going to wriggle his way through, didn't he? He's got to feed that off, maybe get the one-two. Or set his teammate up. That was the opportunity there before it was too late. Could still be made to rue that. Absolutely. Well, there's time like it is on the clock. In Portugal, we've seen they flash into action. Jao Maria. Just unable to pick out. There's Gaio. Romalho. Suzo. The turn. Oh, wonderful from Suso. Two in the middle. Back with Suarez. Oh dear. Try to walk it in again. No, he's trying to get it on his right foot because he doesn't feel confident taking the shot with his left. But what about when Suso is allowed to turn and face? <laughs> Fair enough trying to get it on the oh. other foot, but it st still seemed to. You get. It's amazing. Look at this for skill. Look, little magician, stunning. Yeah, I wanted to get it back onto his right foot, but. Took an age to happen from Suarez. And that's just it, that window of opportunity slams so shut so quickly. Edgar Borges was part of the coaching staff the last time Portugal won a UEFA age group tournament. That was in 2003 when they triumphed in the under 17s at home. Xiao Matinho, Miguel Veloso. In that team, aims to go on to bigger and better things. And there's a foundations here of a very, very good team. And surely there won't be a slip up against Greece on Monday for Portugal. Foundation of two very good teams. And Suzo. Jose. Oh, well, that's a penalty. Right at the death here. 
Toze, the substitute, playing that out to the right-hand side. And, oh, there's the forward-thinking left-back. It's Grimaldo on Escaio, and Portugal with a lifeline at the death. Escaio does a number on Grimaldo. Not a nasty one, but as soon as he checks back in, he knows, because he's obviously a scientist, knows the laws of physics, says that Grimaldo will not be able to stop, and there's going to be a collision, and now the referee does not have a choice to the spot. So, let's talk about pressure, shall we? Well, time to be a captain. Yeah, I was going to say. Going to say. The man with the responsibility is the man with the armband. Jao Mario to rescue, surely, a point for Portugal at the death. He wouldn't begrudge them it, in truth. It's Jao Mario, it's well taken. It is 3-3 at a fitting finale to an excellent under-19s match. A superb exhibition of football. A not all strolling, walking around exhibition. A full-on go for it both teams and it's been a credit to both the players and the coaching staff of both countries a captain's goal from Xiao Mario we've had six goals at the Lillicula in Tallinn this evening and we've seen quite simply a wonderful European under 19 championship match is there to be another twist well that's a minute of the extra four elapsed, there's going to be a bit more on the end of the four now, surely. Look at that, a thrilling scoreline. We just sat here and say, you know what, at 3 2, it could happen. Because it's happened so many times before. And Spain really could and should have put this match to bed by now. Oh, gosh, yes. Now, if Spain are going to be just flat for the remainder of the game, and whether Portugal feel they can actually go on and steal a fourth. <laughs> Throw in from Grimaldo, they've cut it out, and it's Toze who tries to run at them. The ball was won, and he's let it flow. Whenever there's been a 50-50, Paolo Valeri, the Italian referee. Good ball in! Oh, what a chance to win it! Whistle goes, flag goes up, and it may not have counted, but some flair at the death from that man, Juanmi. What a great ball in. Look at this. He's definitely offside. What a great ball in, and uh, that's not a bad finish, you know. Not a bad finish at all. Yeah, Veloso, the uh, goalkeeper, wasn't aware of the offside situation. So that goes down as a good save, and he didn't know better. It's with Jao Mario. We've had three minutes now of the extra four. I think you've got to give Portugal credit. They've been behind in this game three times to peg it back. Yeah, there's a bit of character in there. Ferreira slinging it to Cavalero. Still there. Difficult quite to pick an outstanding player from this match. There have been some wonderful individual performances. Oh, you'd be churlish not to give it to Yesse for a hat-trick. And then you'd be saying, well, Dulafo, well, he's played particularly well. Suso, then you look at Andre Gomes. You've looked at the leadership qualities of Gia Maria. I just think everybody line up after this game and take a bow. Let's not forget, as well as the three, he did bang in. Could have been five, legitimately, for Jose Rodriguez. Two one-on-ones as well that he didn't manage to finish off. He decided the break. But I think a draw, a fair result. It has been a terrific match in the Estonian capital this evening. It means that neither Portugal nor Spain are able to celebrate qualification for the semi-finals but let's face it both of these sides will be going through unless something absolutely silly happens on Monday when Portugal play Greece 
and Spain play Estonia. Jose Rodriguez scored a hat-trick for the Spanish. Three times Spain went ahead. Three times they were pulled back. Bruma, Adre Gomez, and with a 90th minute penalty, João Mario pegged Edgar Borges' side back on each occasion. 3-3, it finished. Gary, what a match. It was a privilege. It was a privilege to be able to witness this game because uh, players at this age playing with such a high level of technical expertise, with such refreshing self-expression, and not sitting back and being conservative, but going for it. Wonderful, wonderful game of football. Yeah, both sides committed to open attacking play. Individual performances have bounded. For the Spanish hat-trick hero, Jose, scored three, could have had five. Campagna, the captain restored to the team today, was always busy and always looked assured in possession. And, of course, Delofu, who we know all about from the Barcelona B team, was uh, wonderful on occasions as well. And I quite like the look of Agostinho Sarr, rugged presence in the midfield for the Portuguese, and although Bettinho, the striker, didn't have his best afternoon, Bruma out wide was excellent and uh, well played Xiao Mario, not least for the composure required to slot in that 90th minute penalty after Grimaldo had fouled his guy up.